So I'm currently working on um, developing new uh, generation of batteries that will enable us to store uh, energy uh, in, in, in a large scale. Uh, for example, just imagine where you can just uh, have uh, on your roof a solar panel and then you just tap the energy uh, uh, from the sun and then you have to store it somewhere because the sun doesn't shine all the time and then you need this kind of battery uh, that will be able to do that. And I'm also working on a novel kind of material that will also enable you to store hydrogen in large quantity. Why hydrogen? Because hydrogen uh, has a very high content of energy, so we can use the energy from the sun or from the wind to produce hydrogen. So this hydrogen can now be used in combination of what we call fuel cell uh, to, to produce energy that you use to drive cars. So uh, that means we will not uh, use uh, uh, petroleum anymore. Uh, uh, to drive our cars. But to do this, you know, um, we need to find new materials that will enable us to contain this hydrogen in a good way because hydrogen is, uh, is explosive and also is very light. So uh, uh, we have to find a way to really uh, shrink it to size to fit into, into that. Um, part of this material is uh, nanomaterials, uh, material that, you know, just serve like pow they are powdered. If you just expose them to hydrogen, they absorb hydrogen, you know, create a new material so we, that we call metal hydride. When you heat them up, they will be able to release hydrogen. So use that to drive your car. And once the hydrogen is exhausted, you just go to the filling station, they pump hydrogen back. This material absorbs hydrogen. Using this kind of material, uh, you can uh, 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 effectively and efficiently you know, uh, store hydrogen rather than uh, compress, compressing it in large tanks. Uh, it's, it's much better in terms of the energy efficiency. So this is my current focus. Fossil fuels are still going to play some role, so we need them to make chemicals. Most of the petrochemicals actually come from this natural gas and, 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 and then oil, so then we continue to play some role in that area. However, uh, let us not forget that all the African governments are signatory to the Paris Accord, and the only way we can actually fulfill our own part of the agreement is to reduce our CO2 uh, 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 footprint. And, and we, we don't have any choice because also Africa right now, we are not uh, technology developers, we are consumers. And if those who develop those technologies for us, like the cars, if, if, if in the next 50 years there are no uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cars that are based on gasoline anymore or diesel, then we have to switch to electric cars. So it is good for us to know that uh, in as much as we don't have the capacity right now that we can begin to think about this to develop uh, you know, a new set of, uh, you know, uh, uh, people that even know how the technology works. And, and, and if we start now, I think that in the next 10, 20 years that Africa will also not only just be consumers, but we'll also be able to uh, also develop this technology because it's not difficult, you know, the things are already there. So my encouragement will be that, yes, we can start, we have advantage, and, and, and also think about the fact that Africa, for example, uh, the solar irradiance in Africa is quite high. If we can harness the enormous potential from the sun and then using this kind of battery that we are talking about to create this kind of battery, cheap batteries that will enable people to store you know, energy from the sun and then it's, you, know, you now find out that uh, we are going to also uh, have a, a situation whereby we also have um, a, a, a energy independence. So some of those villages do not need to depend on, on, on the electricity grid because we can just you know, uh, maybe find a just small wind farm or, or, or solar farm, a, a panel farm, where we can just harness sufficient energy, store them in, in battery or other kind of materials we are working on right now so that at night this energy will now be still be available for these villagers to use. So I think that Africa don't have a choice. We need to be able to, uh, uh, to start doing something in this direction. So it's a global issue and Africa cannot be left behind in this. There, there are uh, numerous issues, and I just start from the basic. Uh, if I had remained in Nigeria, um, part of the things I do today, I would not have been able to do them because you need, no matter how smart you are and, and how uh, uh, innovative you can be, you have to build on something. There should be an enabling environment for you to be able to do what you want to do. And given the fact that you know science, high-end uh, science, scientific research requires a lot of funding, you know, enormous funding, um, and looking at the budget constraints, you know, Africa, we still have other problem of, you know, hunger and disease, 
all these problems have to be tackled. So my suggestion would be for the, for the African government, uh, since we might not be able to do it on country level, let us start emulating Europe. We have European Union, and we have the European Research Council that actually set research goals. They make money available, you know, uh, so that even some of the poor European countries can have access to funds. Why not, you know, our leaders unite, you know, build center of excellence, you know, uh, 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 where world-class research can be done. In this case, that's the only, uh, uh, only, only, uh, um, only thing that will attract, you know, uh, high talented Africans. I've met them everywhere. Have, uh, uh, you know, uh, African professors in all the top universities in 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 US and Europe. You know, even in Stanford and 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 MIT. So if African leaders can think about this and devote, you know, just small amount of money to create this center of excellence where this high end of uh, research can be done, then uh, I think we'll attract people. And once these people come back, they'll start training other people. And before we know it, we're going to have uh, the multiplier effect, uh, which we mean that we'll train highly skilled people who will be able to use their knowledge and talent to transform Africa. The problems we have are problems that other continents have, you know, overcome. You think about China, you think about Malaysia, think about Singapore even. Oh, some of these countries, they started at the same time, with, they got independent, like Malaysia, also uh, uh, Singapore, almost at the same time uh, with uh, most of African countries. But if you look today, you know, they are far, far ahead, you know, and we are left behind simply because we have not found, the, you know, uh, 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 we've not prioritized investment in science and education. So I think this is the key to solving Africans' problem. And even the political problem we have in Africa, I think that by the time people are well educated and people are, 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 are self-sufficient in the sense, you know, that they have the basic thing they need, then they will be able to, you know, to rationally even choose their leaders. And, and then uh, most of the problem will also be solved. So my suggestion is to invest you know we have pan african institute you know even if it's one or two where we can start you know uh, doing this with time maybe individual countries might be able to afford to also build their own center of excellences where high level research will be done my goal is to be able to um, to uh, to develop new technologies that we have a uh, disruptive effect you know so uh, especially in the energy uh, energy um, storage, uh, the renewable energy uh, sector, also not only that, also health sector. Uh, for example, think about having uh, you know just devices that you can just use you know easily and you know, cheap devices to just harness energy from the sun, not the solar panel, but just be able to just convert the solar heat you know directly into electricity that poor people in Africa can use. Also, in terms of health, I would like to develop some kind of uh, uh, materials. You know, I worked on sensor before that will be able to diagnose, you know, disease in a very affordable one that will be able to uh, diagnose disease. And also, not just doing research, I'm also passionate about, you know, training the next generation of people, you know, so I, I, I'm passionate about teaching, you know, uh, and also not teaching just where I am now, but also being involved in raising young Africans that will be able to, you know, to take our place when we leave, you know, and, and, and I'm also uh, passionate about, I would like, to also be engaged, you know, with uh, with you know this Pan African Initiative to see how we can also uh, begin to change, you know, the narratives of Africa using science and technology. So this is where I want to see myself in the next uh, five to ten years.